All right, so tonight, today, we're going to start with taking a brief review at derivatives. So remember that a derivative is a special limit. Oh, it might help if my pen's not working right. So the derivative at a point may be expressed as the limit of this special difference quotient. Okay. Newton has his notation as well. But instead of letting the point go to zero, he lets the distance on the interval go to zero. Well, what interval, Mr. Isaac? Well, the interval is going to go from c to c plus h. So as h goes to zero, this is going to an interval whose width is zero. Newton also added the derivative function, which is this special difference quotient. The limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these are just limits. So you can use all your limit laws here. Now, what happens geometrically? Geometrically, if one of these limits exists, because you're looking for it, the function is locally linear. What's that mean, Mr. Isaac? Well, that means as you zoom in, right, you may start with a curve, like maybe your curve is like this and here's your point. But as you start zooming in, you zoom in, maybe it's like this, and you zoom in until eventually you're so close it looks locally linear. And then you can take two points and use two points on the curve that are close together to approximate the slope of the tangent line. So you need to remember that this derivative at a value is just a special slope of a tangent line. Now, at the point of tangency, the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. So that means as long as you don't have a horizontal or vertical line, that the product of the slopes is negative 1. Many of you like to say they're opposite reciprocals. Now, in this video, all we're going to talk about is <clears throat> our, our basic derivative properties. Mm, that coffee tastes good in the morning. So let's find... The slope of the tangent line at 2. Okay, so f of 2, because I'm going to use the alternative form, will be 2 squared plus 2 times 2. 4 plus 4, that's 8. Now, what I like to do is build the difference quotient slowly. Now, I know that I'm going to be dividing this by x minus 2 in this case, but you should be able to tell me that you can factor this. Now, I form the difference quotient. Oops. That's... That. Okay. then from there, f prime of 2, which is the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x minus f of 2 all over x minus 2 by the substitution property of equality. Now, before I go any further, I want to talk about 
I have a highlighter here. I want to talk about this. By design. Okay, did you hear what I just said? By design, as x goes to 2, f of x minus f of 2 all over x minus 2 will go to the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So there's this extra algebra to do. So for us, by dot, this is 2 plus 4, which is 6. So y minus 8 equals 6 times x minus 2 is the equation of the tangent line. So the equation of the normal line at the point of tangency, which is 2 comma 8, is right here. Now, then we normally keep building derivatives at points and derivative functions. So this brings us to some derivative theorems. <coughs> Now, properties of derivatives, these are theorems, okay? So, the derivative of a sum or difference is the sum or difference of the derivatives. The derivative of The product of a number, a scalar and a function, is the scalar times the derivative of the function. And then we had our first rule that we went over, which is the power rule, which says the derivative with respect to x of x to a power is the power times x to one less degree. So if you couple this with the sum and difference rule for derivatives. You can see that polynomials, when you take their derivatives, are polynomials whose degree is one less. So if you have a parabola, all of their derivatives will be lines. If you have a, a cubic, all of their derivatives will be quadratics. Now, as we started to look at this, we began to notice a few things. That we could use the derivative to analyze the function because it would have to have horizontal tangent lines somewhere. So if we, and this was when we, this is leading down the road to the idea of talking about what's called a critical point, but we're not there yet. This is just part of when it could be a critical point. If we set that equal to zero, we were able to, let's say, break our domain up, and then we could test and we would draw tangent lines at the curves in between there so we could see what kind of signs the slopes would be. Well, we learned that if the derivative was positive at a point, the function was increasing. So where we're going with this is we're going to be able to make sign charts and to be able to analyze behavior. Now, we also learned using... difference quotients, which is really a lot of work, okay, then we had the product rule, and we had the quotient rule, okay, so the product rule says if f and g are differentiable, if you take the derivative of the product of two differentiable functions. It's the sum of the derivative of the first times the second and the first function times the derivative of the second. The quotient rule is similar. Now, I'm going to use shorthand notation here. f prime g minus f g prime all over the square of the denominator. Now, the quotient rule was important because it allowed us to then go and develop all of the trig derivatives. So that means the derivative with respect to x of the tangent of x was the secant squared of x. The derivative with respect to x of the cotangent of x 
was minus cosecant squared of x. The derivative with respect to x of the secant of x was the product of the secant of the angle and the tangent of the angle. And the, ooh, I'm running out of room. The derivative with respect to x of the cosecant of x was negative 1 times the product of the cosecant of the angle, the cotangent of the angle. And that basically, ladies and gentlemen, are all of the basics of the derivative. And then we began building up to this crescendo called the chain rule, which will be the next little video. And then the chain rule tells us how do we take the derivative of a composite function. And then we start looking at a lot of, I think of them as applications of the chain rule. They're really basic applications of the derivative, but the chain rule gives them to us.